Hello, this is Carrie Fell. Welcome to my studio. So I've decided to make some tea towels and as I often do, I pull out my yarn and I decide what to do with it um, just by uh, looking and imagining and and rearranging yarn cones. So these ones over here are 100% cotton and these two groups are cotton linen, a blend, so cotton and I uh, divided them into two groups here I think for uh, probably two sets of towels. I won't uh, mix these colors too much. Uh, right now I've started winding from this group. Uh, my warping board is up here and I'm winding some boats. So I've got this blue, I've got this blue cone here and I'm winding 15 yards on the warping board and the pattern I'm using just uses groups of 20 and 40. So I need um, some warp chains. I need seven with of 40 ends long and eight of 20 ends long. So I need a total of 440 ends. As I finish winding each chain, I drop it here in this bucket. I'm putting a label on it. So I know that this one, is 40 ends of 15 yards long and I'll just keep dropping them in the bucket here 40s and 20s and then I'll design the color order on the loom as I thread through the reed. I've woven this draft before and I have a couple of these tea towels in my collection as well as samplers that I use as dishcloths and I love this pattern because it has so many treadling options. I found the draft in Davison's Green Book, and I'll have a link to that below. Okay, I finished winding my warp on my warping board over here, and it's all sitting in the bucket here at my feet, and it's a bunch of chains. And I've woven this pattern before at 20 ends per inch, and touch on the loose side maybe, but um, so it's 440 ends at 20 ends per inch, 22 inches wide. Now, Janet Dawson is a proponent of getting a reed that fits exactly the ends per inch that you're going for. She finds 20 a little loose, 24 a little tight. So halfway between is 22 ends per inch. Now that means a very interesting slaying um, pattern, you know, two, one, two, three, or I don't know. I didn't. I didn't calculate it. So what she has done is special ordered an 11 dent reed. Well, she put in a special order recently. And so today, just in the nick of time, I just finished winding this. Today, my 11 ends per inch reed arrived. So I'm going to try this at 11 ends per inch, well, 22, instead of 20. This gives me a whole different set of circumstances. I still have 440 ends wound off. Um, so at 11 or 22 ends per inch instead of 20, I'm going to get a narrower tea towel. Uh, I could add a couple more repeats uh, to the end of the tea towel and to get it the width that I had it before. But I'm looking at my colors and it would, I would have to use a completely different color and it would be an accent stripe, which I think might be a little bit too strong for what I'm going for. So I think I'm going to weave the same number of ends, 440, and just uh, have them in this 11 ends per inch instead of the, the 10 doubled that I usually do. And we'll see how it goes. And the tea towels are threaded through my new 11 dent reed. I have my leaf sticks uh, taped onto the breast beam and there's the cross and that's what I used to thread it through the reed. I'll take them from behind the reed here to thread through the heddles. That's tomorrow. 
I like to lash on my warps. To do that, I open up a shed uh, as even as possible with the same number of threads up and down. And then I use a uh, shoelace as my lashing on string and I just loop it through the knotted uh, warp ends and uh, sort of lash it onto the the metal bar. And if I find that one area is a little bit looser, I go along like this and um, you know adjust the, the cord as I go along until it all feels even. Now I'm ready to weave. To spread the warp at the beginning of the piece, I throw three shots of a heavy wool. The wool is nice and grippy, so it works well for this. And then after the three shots, I finally bead it, and this tends to spread it nicely. And then I do that a few more times until I find that the warp is spread and evenly makes the set of 22 ends per inch. And when it looks like this, then I'm ready to start weaving the tea towels. Right, I am in my usual spot, the floor behind my loom, uh, deciding now on the weft. And I've got 15 yards of cotton on there, and already I can feel that it's different than the 8-2 cotton that I'm used to, which is kind of cool. I like the little shine to it. Uh, these are the cones of... The cotton, this is all that's left. There's not really enough here for um, a towel of each of these colors, of course. So this might be neat to combine all these leftovers to create a towel. Don't know if there's enough there for one. There might be. Um, oh yeah, I see some more over there. So I might do a towel with all the ends left. And these ones are a different color family. I'll probably do a whole different set of towels with those. But I also have my basket of assorted eight twos. So uh, I've got some cotton here. 60 linen, 40 cotton. And so that might uh, make a nice towel if I use that as the the weft and the light blue would match. I've got a bunch of blues that would look good. I have a boucle. Don't know if there's enough here for a towel but I may purchase some boucle because I've never used that um, in a towel before and I think that would be interesting. I'd like to see what the what the texture is like. And finally I have a spool here of cotton chenille. 100% cotton, but it's a chenille. And I've been told that uh, the towels aren't all that absorbent. I've had somebody um, who has made uh, a chenille towel and they said it wasn't very absorbent. But you know what? I'm going to try it because I want to see this for myself to see whether it works. So lots of options for weft here. I'm just going to um, wind some bobbins now and start weaving. Oh, I almost forgot. In uh, one of my auctions I went to, I picked up some linen. So these are 100% linen and comparable weight, I think. And I think this might make some nice towels too. So I'm also going to try that. Everything is on the loom and I'm flying along in the weaving so much so that I've been forgetting to videotape this. I'm on towel number six. This is number five down here. It's 100% linen and it was giving me grief. Um, the What I mean, 100% linen weft. And it's beautiful and it's going to be beautiful but uh, the yarn kept jumping off the bobbin. And I got some good advice to keep conditions humid and keep the bobbins in a humidor. So I will probably do that for the next bit of linen that I pull out. But I've uh, moved back into cotton again. And I'm doing various uh, treadlings. 
This is one that I designed myself. It's not in Davison, but it's nice uh, and quick to weave and uh, I think it looks kind of cool. So this is towel number six. I'm hoping to get uh, 14 or 15 towels off this work. The next weft is a white boucle. So this is all loopy and bumpy and it's creating a really cool texture on here and it weaves up really quickly. So this will be interesting to see once it's wet finished and completed. The next towel is turquoise 82 cotton and I love the look. I'm doing treadling number one and it's the simple one. The reason why I'm using that treadling is I found in my notes here that when I use uh, treadling number one it takes less weft than uh, some of these other ones and with this one, I wound off what was left on the spool and I had only two bobbins and I wasn't sure if I'd have enough to do one of the more twilly type uh, treadlings. So uh, the basic uh, lots of plain weave and sort of mixed with, I don't know, basket weaving? Anyway, uh, that's why I chose this treadling. The colors look awesome. And towel number nine is a cotton chenille. I was told by a friend that she made cotton chenille towels and they were not absorbent at all. Uh, they just repelled the water. And so I'm just going to try it so I can see what the effect is. I believe her, but I, I want to see the effect myself. So, um, yes, cotton chenille in a gray color from my stash. And again, I'm doing the treadling number one, which has uh, blocks of plain weave in it. And the point of that is to hold the chenille tight. Chenille will worm if given space. So twills and floats will um, encourage the chenille to worm up out of the cloth after the finishing and during use. So uh, squeezing it tight with a plain weave will help keep it in place. So I'm beating hard. Uh, even though chenille is fluffy and wide and it seems much like a much bigger yarn than the 8-2 cotton, when you look at chenille it, um, it has fluff around a very narrow core and it's the core that you need to look at when you're trying to decide uh, the set and how wide the yarn is. So this isn't the width, the true width of the chenille. The core that runs down the center of it is what we should be taking into account. So it actually beats in to um, about the same uh, picks per inch as the 8-2 cotton. Here's the next weft. It is black cotton and it's quite the contrast from the chenille. I like it. It makes a clear pattern and sort of the chenille uh, muted everything, of course, being light. Now we have the dark which sort of accentuates the colors. I'm really enjoying this pattern. I'm doing two with the black. So they'll at least be two the same in this run. <laughs> I just want to mention that I'm not using a floating selvage on this treadling. Uh, as a result, 
the weft isn't catching the edge threads every time and that's okay uh, you can see that there's some gaps here but it's such a tight weave that I don't think that's going to be a problem and in wet finishing um, it'll tighten right up there and I think that'll be just fine the floating selvage does slow me down as I try to guide it through the uh, the edge and so to just not worry about it is rather freeing this edge too it's not catching every time but that's okay and I think it looks fine that I have very consistent edges also you may have noticed random threads like this this is my measuring thread uh, before the end goes around over the beam I take out my measuring tape here and I just see how much I've woven I tie string on at the fell line and then I write down on my notes uh, how long the towel is at that point and then as this moves around I measure from that point so I'll go like this measure from that to here and then I'll put you know on another one and write down the new measurement on my chart so it works out to about 20 inches of weaving um, before I put on another one and then I just cut the old one off once the new one is on and recorded towel number 12 is the same treadling and it's in a blue organic cotton weft as usually happens when I'm weaving away my mind wanders and I start thinking about the next warp that's going on the loom I'm going to tie on to what I have here and make another run of tea towels I have a warp a dyed warp I didn't dye this one uh, I came upon this one as part of an estate sale and it is a two cotton beautifully dyed there's only 200 ends so it won't um, go the full width of the towels but what it will do is do five of these wide stripes so I'll tie on the beautiful blue dyed warp on five of these stripes and then the rest of the towel will be either white or natural and then I'll weave it up this is only four and a half yards long so four towels probably from this warp I'm looking forward to it but first I have to finish this so I'm on tea towel number 13 which is a nice bird's eye in these sections and a an interesting texture on the in-between sections now to make this easier to treadle um, here we go so this is what I'm doing here as you can see the treadling is a point 12 and when it gets up to four it jumps down to one and then back up to four now that's not a, a very complicated treadling but I've I've made it even easier it's a cool little trick that I heard somewhere maybe Janet Dawson anyway it, I find it easier just to go left to right and then back down a complete zigzag instead of having to go back to one and then back up to four again so what I did is I have uh, six treadles which many four harness looms have and so what I did is I retied up my fifth treadle to be one so treadle five is tied up exactly the same as one so what I can do is I can just zigzag back and forth and I don't have to think towel number 15 using the same blue 82 cotton I'm doing an even simpler treadling which is a straight twill four three two one four three two one And even though it's a 
different pattern than the previous towels, it's completely um, compatible. So it would make a nice set if you want two slightly different. Towel number 16, it's cleaning off the bobbins. So all the leftover bobbins with the various colors are taking their turns being woven on here. I also have a bunch of cones with the warp leftover warp colors on them and I'll clean off one or two of these or partially clean off some of these too uh, to make a full towel. I like to do this at the very end of the warp so I can clean off some bobbins and I get an idea of maybe what some of the other colors look like, how they interact with the warp. I'm never sure if I'm going to get a complete uh, item off the off this last bit, but it looks like I might get a full towel off of this one. I need to leave a little bit at the end. I need to leave a little bit of length because I'm going to tie on another set of towels to this warp. Tea towels are woven. Gonna release the brake a bit. And I have a bit of scrap yarn here at the end and the first thing I'm going to do is take it over to my sewing machine and do a, I don't have a, a serger so I will do some sort of a substitute serger stitch along this edge. Now I want to preserve this threading. This is going to be more tea towels in different colors so I'm very careful to take the first bit if I just cut right across, everything will bounce back and pull back through the reed and all my threading will be gone. So I, I knot this so that when it releases, it doesn't all pull through the reed. And I'll probably do that on this end too. And now I can cut. You can see it pulled back up against the reed. So if I'm sure I'm going to be careful, I can just leave this as is. If I think I'm going to be a klutz, which I often end up being, I will not the entire thing all the way across. Just walking past the, the back there or brushing against something causes things to happen and so I just like to be careful. So as usual, the one where I clean off all my bobbins is the one that I probably like best. Back at the beginning, I'm going to keep the packing in. Okay, 
Now, if I had a serger, I would take this to the machine and serge them all apart. But I just have a sewing machine, so I'll just uh, do the equivalent on either side of this white line. And then I can cut it apart at the white line and then hem. I didn't do anything different, uh, use a thinner thread or anything like that. I've done that in the past, but uh, I'm trying it with the just the same weaving all the way to the edge. Uh, it's easier, quicker to weave. And if I'm trying to speed up my production time, then this is one of the things that uh, I've done to do that. Well, apparently my hallway and sales area does not Add up to 15 yards. I still have a pile at the far end there. Wahoo! At this point, I throw the whole pile into the washing machine and the dryer. So I just pulled this pile out of the dryer and I thought maybe we'd take a look at it before I actually hem them. After uh, doing the sort of faux fur serging on my sewing machine, I did two rows of serging and then I cut in between them. And the little white line in between uh, really helped with that. I just followed the white line in between them. So now we have our rough edges here. And I'm going to uh, fold it over twice and then sew it. But before we do that, I thought I'd take a look at the different uh, patterns and the way they came out um, and, and get a feel for the, the texture of each one just because I don't want to wait until after I've hemmed them. So this is the plain weave and there's some tracking in there, which I, I, I love. It adds a little bit of complexity to, uh, to a cloth that is just otherwise rather plain. So this is what I mean by tracking. So this is just plain weave over and under and tracking is where um, you get lines, diagonal lines, where areas are raised and it makes it look like you've almost got a twill pattern happening. There's a very sharp uh, raised line here and some in here too. And it just happens. It's nothing you can plan for. Um, it happens a lot with cotton in, uh, in plain weave. So even when I iron it, this won't come out. Yes, so this is a nice drape. So this is the plain weave with 100% uh, cotton weft. Next out of the pile is another plain weave also with 100% cotton weft. So we have the same things going on. Some beautiful tracking, which to some people looks like a crease, but it's not. So if that happens to you, don't worry about it. Enjoy the beauty of it. There's some beautiful tracking right here. Yeah. What's next? Okay, here is the chenille. Now this was the big experiment. This is cotton chenille. Going through the washer and the dryer, it has a nice drape. It's a little thicker than, than the other one. 
And I just realized that I did something silly and I didn't measure anything before I put it through the washer and dryer. As a result, we have no shrinkage uh, information. All right, it's a little thicker, but it has a nice drape. It feels like it should be absorbent. I was told that cotton chenille ended up not being absorbent at all. So this towel is not for sale. I'm going to hem it and I'm going to use it in my own um, kitchen and we're just going to test it and see if it's absorbent. I'm also going to be watching to see if there's any worming. Often worming happens um, in the dryer and it has not happened in this case. So I think the weave is tight enough to hold it in place. Worming is when the chenille weft, oh warp too I suppose, um, works its way out of the cloth and creates uh, little loops and it, uh, it pops out of the cloth in various places. Looks like a little inchworm uh, going in and out. And chenille needs to be set quite tightly in order for that to not happen. So I beat this fairly well and it seems to be staying in place. So yes, this is my test piece to see whether cotton chenille is absorbent or not. Next. Ah, this was a pattern that wasn't really obvious on the loom. And but I love how the pattern tightened up and became more obvious. This one has a nice drape. This is linen and I can feel it, just the way it sort of plops. Yes, feels like linen. Some of this um, came out earlier and I went to go snap it and of course all it did was bite into my hand because it's linen and I, could, I can't snap it <laughs> like cotton. I might have permanently creased it by putting it through the wash and dryer but we'll see. It does feel very different. It has sort of a, a spring to it that the cotton doesn't. So because the weft is linen, this one is 75%, is it 50-50 cotton and linen? The cotton? need to check. If it's 50-50, that means this is 75% linen and 25% cotton. So um, it definitely feels very linen-like. Lovely. Another cotton weft. I like this. Uh, I like this treadling. Yep, we'll do more of those. Here's another experiment. This is the boucle, the cotton boucle. And look at the texture in there. Wonderful. It makes it look a lot coarser, even though there's the same number of picks as the regular cotton. It's just the boucle makes it fluff up. And I wonder if this is more or less absorbent. I don't know. I'm tempted to keep this one and try it out for myself, but I'll put it in the sale. Weft. Oh, this is the final one. Okay, that's why this suddenly seems different. This is the one where I clean up all the bobbins. So we have all the different color changes down the length. And looking at this, makes me wonder why I didn't do this on every towel. I love this. And I love how the uh, pattern comes and goes depending on what color the weft is. So you can't see the, the twill here, but there it is. Gone. Subtle. There it is. You know, and it, I don't think it even matters that the, the, um, the color blocks are different sizes. I think that kind of gives it some interest. So now to the sewing machine to press, to press the edges over, roll them under and sew them. I have a stack of tea towels. Now this isn't the full um, number. I had uh, 16 come off the loom and I've already sold a number of them. So we can just look at what's left. Um, 
yeah, before I got a chance to film this recap, um, some of them uh, went out the door, so that's great. This is one that's hanging in the shop, uh, sort of the display one. And it's done in a rose path treadling and very quick and easy to do. I like this and I like how we get these neat uh, uh, diamond rose path shapes every second um, stripe sequence. And some, some are, are more obvious than others. So they kind of come and go. This is the one with the boucle weft. And I think it's probably really nice and absorbent. It's, um, I just had white boucle, but I can see doing this again and trying different boucle colors uh, to, uh, to get a different look for each one. Black weft. And yeah, all these treadlings are actually kind of easy. So um, I can just go into autopilot, which is the idea when you're making tea towels. So uh, that's black cotton, blue cotton, more blue cotton also in the rose path. So yeah, this one is a twill and this one is the rose path. And the twill is a little smoother. So um, I don't know if that makes any difference to absorbency or not. I, su I suspect not. I'm just feeling this. It feels wonderful. This one is, uh, what is that weft? I think this is a cotillon weft and it's very soft. So yeah, I like it. Wow. That's a nice, nice yarn. This one is the, uh, linen weft and it feels crisper. It has a slightly different drape than the cotton ones, and um, it has that linen drape. And there's a lot of linen in this because the warp is cotillon and the weft is 100% linen. So it has a very much a, a linen feel. And there's a bit of a, a shine um, because of that linen weft. So if you like the feel of linen, it's not soft, which, but I'm sure uh, after repeated uses and washing, uh, linen softens right up from what I've heard. This has been a very useful exercise because I have another warp on the loom right now uh, with tea towels and I'm trying to decide which weft and which treadling to use. So by looking at this batch I can make up my mind and those might show up in another video. A big shout out to my patrons whose support helps to keep me creating these videos. Thank you very much. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.